Hello, and welcome back to Williams Educational Consultants. I am Wendy Williams, founder of Williams Educational, and today I am honored to have Andy Morrison, Regional UA Admissions Advisor for the University of Alabama. I've known Andy for many, many years, and I'm so grateful that you are taking time to talk with me and my viewers about campus visits. I feel that it is really a critical piece in the admissions process. So I'm gonna jump in and just ask, how do you feel the value of the campus visit has changed over the years and why is it important for students to get on Alabama's campus? Uh, I think the campus visit today, the physical campus visit is even more important today than it, than it, it ever has been. Um, I think the pandemic, uh, changed a lot of that for us. I think we realize uh, a lot more what having that physical, as we try to craft a, and change our visitation and trying to uh, provide as much information, as much experience online as we could, um, there's just nothing that, that, that beats being on the college campus to experience that. Sounds like a, like a, um, you know, throwaway comment, you know, uh, but it really, it really is. And I think that, that that's probably crystallized even more uh, in recent years. Um, and I just think that the pressure that students have on making the right college choice these days um, is so much more important than it ever was before. I think it's really important for students to um, uh, not only pick the right school and make the right choice in terms of what school to attend, but then also have a sense of how are they going to utilize the resources and the opportunities available to them academically, socially, in all aspects of that specific university? Um, and that can only be gathered, um, I think, or that can only be consumed or, I guess, um, uh, you know, through the, the campus visit. You know, I think you can look and see all the different options, but then going and seeing, okay, well, you know, What's it going to be like to go from a dorm that I want to live in to the dining hall, to the building where I'm going to spend a lot of academic time, to the library, to the football stadium, to, you know, and so, and kind of seeing how accessible it is and just kind of saying, okay, well, what can I do at this university and how can I utilize the best of the student academic and social experience? Well, now that we're talking about visits, I want to really discuss the difference between a campus visit and then showing up for a football game. Mm -hmm. Because I have time and time again heard students say, I've been on campus, I've seen it. And the question is, did you go officially or did you go to the tailgate and watch the game? So tell me what your thoughts on the visits versus the tailgating. Well, first, I'll just say, I, I, you know, there's never a bad time to be on any college campus. I think any if you're in the college church process, you know, the more you can get onto a campus, onto campuses, uh, you know, you're going to learn, you're going to gain something from that experience. Now, the difference between uh, specifically at the University of Alabama, and I would say you probably could insert just about any SEC school and a SEC town in this spot. Uh, I don't think that Tuscaloosa is any different than Auburn or Athens or Starkville. Um, the, 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 the city of Tuscaloosa, when the University of Alabama has a home game, is the lar becomes the largest city in the state on that specific day. And maybe right. even the course of, over the course of two days um, uh, or a weekend or whatever the case may be. Um, that is not the case when it, it's a, it's a, a, a Wednesday uh, or even say a Monday or a Friday, um, just a regular day um, that doesn't have any kind of coincide with any kind of athletic event. Um, and so it's just a different, it's a different atmosphere on campus. It's a different atmosphere around town. You're going to, you know, when you're there for a football game or something like that, you're going to, um, you're going to encounter um, clo road closures, things like that. I mean, and then uh, it comes down to, you know, the quad is 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 a focal point. You know, uh, behind me is the, is Denny Chimes. That's a focal point on our quad. Um, well, the quad is fully uh, 
uh, full of tailgaters on football football Saturdays. Um, not so if you come on a, on a on a Wednesday. Um, so you know this this those those instances. Also, the opportunity to um, just to experience the actual university um, on a uh, on a random Wednesday, as opposed to literally all you're able to consume on a Saturday is the football game. Um, and that's fine. You know, th th that's important because sports are a part, especially in the SEC, you know, in any major university, um, sports are going to be a big part of the culture of the university and of the uh, of the student experience um, outside of the classroom. So that definitely is important. However, I wouldn't th say it's vital. I would say the much more vital part is to get a sense of um, how things are going to uh, look for you academically what other thing what things you might have the opportunity to get involved in and do from a student organization standpoint um, those are much more important than attending a football game um, yes, but I mean, football, football football games basketball games you know they, they're all they're all fun uh, and, and and certainly good experiences to have but not vital yeah you got to stay in school to enjoy it so you got <laughs> to you want to do and be successful doing very true and, I, and actually and actually I, I I you know just just you know, in a general standpoint, I might, um, I might encourage students to, if they're going to go to a sporting event, maybe go to a sporting event. That's not the focal point of that school. Like, so, so don't go to a, of a basketball game or an out or a football game in Alabama, maybe go to, go to a softball game or a gymnastics meet or, um, baseball game or something like that, where you can still get, you know, the experience of going to a social event like that, but it's not so overwhelming, um, that you're you're completely leaving the other part of the of the visit experience uh, behind. Yes, I mean I I agree. I've I've toured a lot of universities, hundreds, and I will say to all my viewers and everybody that's listening that University of Alabama does put on one of the best tours out there, hands down. Um, I think that it has such great charm on that tour, and it really does display the culture. There's there was a lot of humor that was brought on the tour and um, educated parents and students just about the culture and the community and, you know, what to expect and, and had some great conversations. Um, so I really was impressed with what Alabama is doing um, for their students and engaging them on that, that visit. What are some things that you would recommend students to do while they are on a tour and maybe some things not to do while they're on a tour? Yeah. So honestly, uh, and, and I'll say, I'll say this, you know, um, there's the campus tour. And then I also use, I also use like visit experience. So like visit as opposed to a campus tour because the campus tour is, is, while it's all inclusive, uh, you'll see the entire campus. It's very general. Uh, it's a good general um, look at the university. So that's definitely good. But in terms of crafting the best visit, um, definitely uh, try and talk to um, to people you'll be re uh, interfacing with, you know, be it uh, advisors, uh, um, potentially faculty, um, trying to get some glimpse into maybe your academic area of interest um, and, and how that would work. Um, maybe look into some aspects of student life if you can, um, you know, be it Greek life or study abroad or some other other components that might be really important in terms of what you want to see, what the school off offers. Um, so definitely do that. Um, and, you know, um, you know, we have resources that we can, what we do in-depth visits for students, we can do those during the week. Um, and so certainly happy to, to pr provide that resource to students if, if it's desired. Um, and I would say that most schools probably have the capability to do that, or certainly students should look into that. Um, work with your admissions office with something like that, uh, because it's not, you know, while there's a lot of resources where you can go out and probably schedule a lot of these meetings yourself, um, right. the office of admissions might be able to direct you in, in a good way in terms of what that, what resources they might be able to help you with. Um, what I would stay away from is attending classes. Um, this is one of the things that I, 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 I often hear uh, parents, um, uh, you know, to, to ask me about attending a class in this specific area or that specific area. And the reason why I say stay away from it is because if you get the right class um, on the right day, it's going to be tremendous. Otherwise, it's probably going to be boredom city. 
Um, even if it's a ma even if it's a major specific class, mm -hmm. you know, you think about it, you're, if you go in, if you go in and you're, you're going into class, they're not crafting the class as a recruitment event to recruit you. They're, yeah. they're the class is there to educate the students that are in the class. So if you don't know anything about the subject that's being taught, you're not going to be able to engage. You're not, you know, and, and they might not, they might not really want, want you to engage. Maybe they'll encourage you to engage, but you're not, you're not going to, it's not going to hold your interest. Um, and it's going to be boring. Um, had a, a, a family friend of ours who uh, did not heed my advice um, and did go ahead and, and schedule classes to attend on a, uh, on a, not at Alabama, but at another school. And um, the, uh, the review that they gave my wife was how boring they were. Or I was like, Hmm, I wish someone would have told them that. Um, I just don't think, I think, I get the point. I get the idea of getting into a class and seeing what a, a, you know, a college class is like or whatever. But to be quite honest with you, especially at a major university, you're going to have all different kinds of classes. And so there's really no typical class uh, from that standpoint. Um, uh, and so uh, that really kind of goes out the window. And so, and I just don't think that you're going to ever get what you need out of it. And the class is going to be minimum of, of an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, all at potentially an hour and a half. Right. In an hour and a half, you could potentially have three meetings with uh, advisors in different areas. So if you're looking to potentially major, minor, you have an interest in other areas uh, outside of your major, um, and you want to kind of connect with folks in those areas, you know, that's all valuable. That's all valuable information. And if you spend all that time just sitting in a class, I think that, you know, you're, you're, you're wasting a lot of time from that standpoint. So I would focus much more on trying to get connected with advisors or get connected with faculty. Connection with faculty is good. More of a meeting setting where you can ask some questions. They can ask some questions. You can have a dialogue of about 20, 30 minutes. You're going to get a whole lot, a whole lot more out of that experience than you would out of sitting in a 50 minute class when they're not talking directly to you and their their point is not to necessarily market to you um uh from that standpoint um that's great advice because yeah. i do know a lot of times students want to go and sit in on a a college course yeah. and and i always say just go to youtube pull up any college course and you're going to see what it looks like doesn't mean that you're going to have that professor or the course but you're going to see the way that the students are engaged in that class or not in that class. So um, I always say, don't do an overnight with somebody you don't know. <laughs> yep. That can be disastrous, like really painful for the, yeah. the visiting student. And I don't yeah. know if those schools do that anymore. Anyways. No, I, I, there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, issues around, uh, safety and security and that kind of stuff with with some of those overnight visits and so typically that's not something that you'll you'll find any any college or any specific admissions office sanctioning uh and doing um i i don't i don't discourage students at all from doing a uh from doing a day in the life um visits i think those can be great but if you do it with a friend of yours who can not only do a day in the life where they can say hey you know come attend this class with me at school that's totally that's totally different than um, that's totally different than you just attending a class that's with no one that, you know, like if you're there and you're just like, you know, you're spending some time with a friend of yours who's already at that school or whatever, and they're able to talk to you about their classes, they're able to talk to you about their day. You're able to experience some of the stuff outside the, outside the classroom, experience the city a little bit. That's fantastic. That's great. That's totally different. That's something that's, that's, those are better non-sanctioned. So those are better if you can get that arranged on your end with a friend of yours or something like that that's great um i always say hey i'm happy to you know i'm happy to work in some official stuff if you want to uh in those um but i definitely don't ever dissuade those because i think you know students that do have those experiences those are very beneficial yeah. um but the whole i mean there, there are some you know there are many many um uh instances where you know i might reach out to try and schedule a, a class for a student because they really, really want to go to a class. And the, the college has said, no, we don't do that because it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the purpose, you know, it help and, anybody. And, you know, it doesn't really help anyone. No. And um, so I just, like I said, I just, I think that's, that's really, um, 
what what's the time frame for visits? I mean, I think the earlier you get on a college campus, regardless if you're interested, is always the best, but not every family is ready at that time when they're, you know, traveling down 75 or going up 85 and seeing a sign. They're not really, you know, thinking, yeah. hey, let's get off and go see this. But on your campus in particular, when would you say is a good time to visit? Um, I, I might, uh, you know, honestly, for us, there's always something going on, um, you know, in Tuscaloosa. I think at a, at a large university, I think that's probably always the case, maybe much at smaller schools. So, you know, maybe summers will not be as effective at a smaller school, um, you know, but for us, maybe, you know, uh, steering clear of the start of a semester, um, cause those first, that first week or two of, a, of, a, of the fall semester or the spring semester specifically can be pretty hairy. Um, and, uh, um, while we definitely try to provide resources as many, as, as much as often, um, you know, uh, um, you know, that, that might be a time to, you know, steer clear other than that, like I said, you know, I said, we try and, you know, offer students and opportunities and, and the time of year might affect what we have to offer. Um, but, uh, but doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that we're not able to do certain things or whatever. Like we're going to offer campus tours all every, you know, all the time, as long as we're in session, you know, uh, and we don't have any other kind of big event going on on campus, we're going to offer campus tours, you know, um, we not, we might not be able to offer, um, I would say, on days we have other visitation events, we might not be able to do anything additional to those. Um, the other, only other thing I would say is, is if, you know, think ahead when it comes to things like um, spring break, um, the first week in April is, is a, is a huge, uh, is a huge, pop, hugely popular spring break time for high schools. Middle of March is a hugely popular time for spring breaks in colleges. Um, so those kind of, not to say stay away from those or whatever, but like, Certainly with, with high school spring break, you want to plan in advance because obviously you're not going to be the only one that's probably trying to visit the campus in that, in that week. So plan ahead. Um, with the, with the, the college spring breaks, know that there might be instances where the colleges can't do anything. Like we can't do anything from an in-depth standpoint during our spring break. We still offer campus tours, but that's it. Um, you know, and so uh, that might be something where you have a whole week that's, you know, in March, which is typically – you know, high time for, for, you know, college decisions and things like that. But the university sun spring break, it just doesn't have, we just don't have, just don't have the resources to be able to, to put on a campus visit um, from that same point. So, so kind of keep that in mind as well, but it is going to kind of be different with the different schools. So I would yeah. say definitely plan in advance, um, you know, give it a week or two at the very, very least um you know uh more you can give the more time you can give the better typically the more notice you you can provide the more opportunities you're probably going to have um uh because the more time think you know there is to arrange things so um just kind of keep that in mind as well so being again you've been with alabama for how long uh 15 years okay it's been i knew it'd been a long time um where would you recommend families staying on campus or do you have a favorite? So there's so many options now. I mean, Tuscaloosa has grown up a ton in the last five years. Um, so there has been in the last five years, there's been at least three, maybe four, five uh, hotels that have, have opened up um, in and around the area. So there's a ton of, of options these days. Um, you know, and there's, there's more expensive mm -hmm. and less expensive. Um, so really kind of, you know, there, there's something that there to meet everyone. Um, you know, we do, uh, we do our training week every year in July and we always, we always for years stayed at this one Hampton Inn. That's right. It's right kind of on the outskirts of campus. It's very, very easy to get to get onto campus. So actually you could technically walk there if you want to, you probably wouldn't want to, but um, you could technically walk there. We do have a, a, there is a hotel that's not owned by the university, but it is on campus called. Um, so that's, that's a resource. And I know a lot of families have stayed there because if you do stay there, you can walk anywhere. Um, okay, Cause it's, it called? Really, it's called the hotel capstone. Okay. Um, so like I said, if you stay there, you can literally walk anywhere cause it's, it is right on campus. Um, there are several options downtown, which downtown is probably 
from campus, a five minute drive, 10 to 15 minute walk, um, you know, down to downtown, you know, like maybe, maybe 15 to 25, depending on where you're going downtown. Um, but, uh, um, that can be great from a standpoint of accessing like, uh, meals, you know, uh, restaurants and different things like that. If you're looking to kind of experience Tuscaloosa, you know, there's an embassy suites that's been around there for a while. We have a new, uh, hotel Indigo. We have, um, uh, Homewood suites, you know, um, there's a brand new hotel, um, called the Alamite right in downtown Tuscaloosa. That's actually partially owned by Nick Saban. Um, it's one of the pricier ones, but it's a really <laughs> nice hotel. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there's a lot of options around there for sure. Um, I'm always happy to, to provide, um, uh, recommendations and that kind of stuff, tons of restaurants too. So, uh, I used to be able to, I used to be able to cover all the restaurants that I would want to eat at in one week in Tuscaloosa in July. And now you need probably about at least two weeks, um, for me to get, get all the news. <laughs> Lots of different flavors. Mm -hmm. um, well, speaking of what you do for Alabama, tell our listeners a little bit about what your role is and uh, maybe how you got into the position you are in. Sure. So, well, just, you know, I've been in, in higher education for in admissions really for, for about 20 years, uh, maybe a little more than that, a little more than 20 years. Uh, I worked at a small private liberal arts college before up in Virginia, before I came to 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 work for the University of Alabama. And actually, um, I was, uh, I headed up our uh, student ambassador team and, um, and kind of the, the campus visitation program at that school. So I definitely have a lot of, of, of insight and experience in the campus visit uh, arena from that same point. Specifically at Alabama, I am a regional recruiter, a regional admissions advisor. They just made some changes to our, uh, our um, titles and such, but uh, I, I'm based in the Atlanta area, and um, and so here to to recruit students. My territory is Atlanta and, and North and West Georgia, and so uh, we have two Atlanta-based recruiters, um, and we have recruiters all throughout the country too. So uh, we're here to kind of help assist students through the process. You know, we're really here to help with students and here to be advocate, here to be you know uh, provide be a resource for students as they're trying to determine. Um, their fit at the University of Alabama. You know, we don't get involved in the admissions review process or anything like that, but we're here to to answer questions to the best of our ability, you know, and things like admissions and scholarships and things like that, and really help prepare the students for the process and kind of give them the uh, the nuts and bolts of what they need to do and what they need to think about. And then just like I said, be a general resource along the way. Yeah, well, you've always been very, very helpful. And I know my students have always loved reaching out to you and um, I've enjoyed getting to know you through the years as well. So I appreciate all that you do for Alabama and for all of those that you come in contact with. But before we go, I have one last question I ask every viewer. Yeah. Uh, where do you find joy in your day? Um, honestly, you know, uh, the joy I come is, is uh, interaction with people. Um, and just in general, I love the, uh, the counseling aspect of what I do, you know, I don't, you know, uh, I, I would much rather work with students and try and counsel them through uh, the college process, uh, college process. And really, I view my job as to help students identify, you know, I don't, I don't think it's not about where you get in, it's about where you fit in. So I don't think, you know, and I think my job is to help students identify what about the University of Alabama is the best fit for them. Um, and so uh, I just, you know, you know, the opportunities I have to connect with students and kind of help them along that process um, is, is really, you know, important. And so I definitely, uh, those are the, and those also the, the different opportunities to, uh, to interact with people also give you the, the, the spice too. keeps things different. You know, you're not going to the office. It's the same day, every single day. And, and, you know, it's, it's something a little bit new and, and, uh, and exciting and, and, uh, um, so that definitely helps kind of keep the, the spice in it for sure. It keeps you on your toes. I think every yeah. <laughs> every student that you and I both work with are very different. And so I think um, you have to love working with other people and, and help, you know, coach and counsel along the way so that they can find the best fit for them. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, that is what it's about. It's not the name no. of the school. Alabama is a great name, but it might not be for you. Yep. So. Um, we want to make sure to support everybody in that way. 
Well, Andy, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you have a great spring. I know it's going to be a busy one. You're wrapping it up. When does applications close? Uh, we haven't closed applications yet. We don't know specifically, probably with later this spring. Uh, we are still accepting applications for seniors if they're interested um, to apply. Um, but uh, I would think somewhere around May-ish timeframe, uh, we don't have a specific date in terms of when we're still rolling. So still, you know, going to continue to review files, you know, um, throughout the spring. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate your time today. Yep. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Wendy. Okay. Take care. All right. You too.